Okay, back here at the Gotham Expo. Uh, right now we're experiencing a little bit of technical difficulties. As you can see, the football game is all the way over to the left and we want it to be all the way over to the right because I'm joined here with Paul Isaacs from Sound Devices who cannot pay attention because his team, well, it's your, it's your team's rival that's being brutalized, yeah. but it's on the wrong monitor. It's as much fun watching a rival get beat as it watching your own team win. And I'm watching Manchester United get trashed at the minute. Four to nothing now, okay. Oh my gosh. Very good, just to date it a Great little game. bit. Great game. All right. <laughs> well, uh, so as we, we're live, so oh. uh, if you have any questions for Paul, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, so Paul, we, you know, we did get to meet with Sound Devices and NAB a little bit, but we didn't get to see anything. Uh, what is it, you know, give us the five minute, what's the latest and greatest, what are you thinking about, what's on your mind, go. Work related? Work related, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely, we're, our biggest story is the release of version five firmware for our wireless, mm -hmm. uh, our digital wireless system, so the A10TX transmitter, the belt pack transmitter, uh -huh. Woo, there, there it is, there it is. which okay. is also can mount on a boom. Right. Um, yeah. The firmware is also for our A20 mini digital transmitter, so nicely, it's nice small size, and it also works with our A10RX digital wireless receivers. Mm -hmm. And this version five firmware adds uh, a new modulation sc scheme, uh -huh. which we call LR, stands for long range, uh -huh. and we're so excited about it because we always wanted to have the best range digital wireless in the market, and we believe we're there. We, we changed our modulation scheme, and we've done some comparison tests, and in all our tests, we're as good as any other digital wireless out there, in certain circumstances, even better. Mm. And you may think, okay, that's a big, big claim. And it is a big claim, but reality backs it up. And you may think, well, what have we done to achieve that? What sacrifices have you had to make? Well, none really. The, the only one we've had to make is a slight, small increase in latency. Mm -hmm. So our standard modulation scheme was a two millisecond latency, mm -hmm. which is ultra, ultra low. Yeah. This new latency doubles that to about 3.9 milliseconds, which is still more than suitable for our applications, mm -hmm. right? So the long range modulation scheme is the way to go. Um, so, especially in environments like New York where there's just so much interference, mm -hmm. so much RF everywhere, this can really help you get the range you need. So the, so the modulation not only helps in a clean RF environment, it helps in something that is less than ideal. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. On top of the long range modulation, we've also added a Q meter. Mm -hmm. Now what is a Q meter? Well, it's Q stands for quality. Mm -hmm. um, previously, before this firm update, we did used to have an RSSI meter, an RF signal strength meter, which would tell you how strong the incoming signal is. Great. But unfortunately, that does not tell you the whole story about the quality of your signal. Mm. You may have great signal coming in, but there could also be other signals in the same in, in band which are operating on that same frequency and actually uh, d destroying or affecting the, the stability of that signal. Mm -hmm. So you could have full RSSI, but actually you could still be susceptible to dropouts. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is uh, add this Q meter because that will give you prior warning mm. that you are potentially coming up to a dropout scenario, mm. um, even if you've got high RSSI. Mm -hmm. So how does it work? Well, what it's doing is it's looking at the, the wanted signal strength from your transmitter and actually then looking at all the RF um, uh, uh, environmental in-band noise at that frequency and then subtracting that from the signal and then displaying that value. So, for instance, if this is our wanted signal and this is the noise in the environment, if that's really low, you're going to get five bars mm. on the Q meter. Okay. That means... Can you show us what the Q meter looks yeah, like? Here it is. Okay. Just five dots here. Okay. And it's also shown on our actual eight series display as well. So, if I come in here, you can see the Q meter just here and also a history of wow. Q values, uh -huh. okay? So you always know. 
Now, the nice thing about this is if you've got five bars, you're good to go. Right. No chance of dropout. Four bars, clean, no dropout. Mm -hmm. When it gets to three, the noise floor, the environmental noise is coming up a bit closer to the wanted mm -hmm. signal. So the signal to noise is getting smaller. So at three, you should probably start to look and think about, is, do I need to adjust a new frequency? Mm -hmm. Is there, is there something going on here? Is there some device in the neighborhood that's interfering? When it gets to two, you're probably experiencing one or two little dropouts. And at one, yeah, you're going to go. So, so with what we are now, I mean, we see the history. We're at five bars. Yeah, it's full five bar. I'm only running at two milliwatts at the moment as well, okay. but we're close by. But yeah, you don't need to worry about it. If that was to drop to three, I would start to think, yeah, we might want to start thinking about it. It's giving you prior warning that mm. you're getting closer right. to dropout territory. And it's the true story, exact, the exact story. Mm -hmm. The RSSI meter on its own will not give you that information. Mm. It reminds me a little bit of my cell phone. You know, when you're driving into the mountains, you get to two bars, you get to one, and then you know your call is going to drop, and then there's going to be a monster that attacks yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. You know. So that's what version five is all about, mm -hmm. and it's uh, on, on across all the wireless devices, even the older A10. And we've updated our software on the 8 Series to support mm -hmm. that via SuperSlot. <clears throat> and so that includes all the previous things, like you know, when you change the frequencies on the A10 receiver via the SuperSlot, it'll Bluetooth it over and do all the, the normal no things. There's no backlink from here. Was that There's no backlink from, from the device. Oh, got it. So, it's so but you can, what you can do typically at the start of the day is do an RS uh -huh. scan mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And then once you've done the RS scan, you can assign a frequency to any of the transmitters, yeah. and then you'd have to manually enter that on your device. I we see. understand the need for a backlink. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we know why Working it's required. It. Got it. I'm not going to say any more on that. Very good. OK. So and the one other thing I wanted to mention that I didn't know about, but you has been out for a while, this thing oh, the yeah. dig. So sure this is basically this. what we call the A15 pin. It's basically an, an adapter for Sony cameras like the FX9. Um, it uses the standard 15-pin um, interface, slots into the mm. uh, A15-pin accessory that Sony provide. And what this does is it allows you to take an A10RX, slot it directly in, and connect it to your camera. So it's mm. ideal for a camera hop, uh -huh. right? Um, it gives you actually four, uh, two channels of digital audio from our A10 receiver. Mm -hmm. It's not analog, it's two channels of digital, which makes it a very unique solution for, as, for a camera hop. So yeah, that's been available for uh, over a year now. I am clearly behind the times. Catch up. I know, <laughs> sorry. We still don't have the game on the right screen, by the way. Um, oh, a few other things, oh, quickly. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, the, just talking about the app for the A20 Mini, mm -hmm. we already introduced group control. Yep. So like now, you can create groups of transmitters and then you can select the group and then control them all with one button press mm -hmm. and things like that. But now we've added some more group functionality. Mm -hmm. So I can come into my group menu here and I can group change RF power, um, uh, modulation scheme. I can f change them whether it's an RF mode or record mm -hmm. mode. So there's a lot more group control yeah. than there has been before. Great. All right, anything else before we open it up to questions? No? Yep. All right. Great, let's open it up to questions. Uh, sound devices, audio uh, Noor limited. Noor Halawani uh, asks have? if there is any plan to add a plus four plugin for the 888, just like there is for the 833. Oh. Ooh, interesting question. I guess if the demand was high enough, we would consider it doing it. I mean, it, it's essentially possible, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we haven't really seen much of a demand for that because the 888 already has 20 tracks, so. Right, because it's got Dante as well. It does have right. Dante, Dante as well. It's got Dante, it's got so, the 8-analog yeah. I.O., yeah. it's got I would, I would say to, is it Noah, Nawa? Is it Nawa? That um, to tell all his, ask all his friends to ask for it as well, and if there's a high enough demand, we'll think about it. Great. Uh, I think what I have the most have important Chris? question ever. Baldev Rayat asks if Paul was a Liverpool fan. <laughs> well, no, I do support a team in red, but it's not Liverpool. <laughs> I wish it was Liverpool. They're doing so well this, <laughs> doing so well this year. But I'm an Arsenal fan, born and bred. Used to live near Highbury, Islington. I can't get it out of my bloodstream. And actually, Arsenal are doing well right now, and especially with their main rival, Manchester United, losing 4-0. Yes, 
Oh, and just to, just to give you an update, we do have the TVs oh, on look the at rest that. screen. We got two of them. What they need is one half on one screen. And That's true. <laughs> That's true. Not bad. Uh, we're all caught up right uh, now. Chris, what else do we have? All right, Great, fantastic. that was easy. Yeah, Paul, thank you so much for being here with us. We thank really you. appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for making the trip across the pond to Wisconsin and then across the country to here. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. It's yeah. always great. Really great. enjoy it. Really awesome. enjoy it. All right. Uh, thank you so much for watching and for your comments. As always, you can watch this video and more on GothamSound.tv. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter for all of the latest updates on location sound stuff. Uh, and as always, uh, either call us or email us at info at GothamSound.com if you have any questions. Uh, thank you again so much for watching.